Well, hello 1P and welcome to the next unit. We're talking about linear relationships in this unit. Uh, and I know we talked a little bit about linear relationships in the last unit. We're going to delve into them just a little bit deeper this time. Um, so we're first going to look at recognizing linear relationships. And some of this is actually review from last unit. So hopefully uh, it's not going to be too stressful for you. Um, so our goal today, I can recognize linear relationships by looking at graphs, tables, or descriptions. So recognizing linear relationships. First thing I'm going to tell you to do is to fill out these tables. Now I'm going to fill out a couple of the uh, tables and then I'm going to tell you pause me and I hope you pause me and finish filling them in and then have a little look at them and see if you can answer the two questions underneath that. Which chart shows a linear relationship and how do you know? Okay. And then we're going to go on to graph the relationship and see if our assumption was true. Uh, because as you know, if you graph a linear relationship, um, the dots form a perfectly straight line when you graph them, uh, provided that it's perfectly linear and not a scatter plot of actual data, which could just be a little bit of a mess. However, let's have a look here. Let's fill in some of this chart. Uh, this says frame number and perimeter in units. Um, so our frame number one has a perimeter of, and remember what perimeter means, perimeter means the distance around an object. So it takes me one, two, three, four units to go around frame one. How about frame two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight units to go around frame two and so on and so forth and hopefully you can fill in the rest of them and I will come back and show you what the rest of them turn out to be um, right shortly but I'm going to talk about frame number and area in square units so if we take a look at the frame number one there is only one remember area is the surface it covers I have one square box so that is one square unit for frame number two, I have one, two, three square boxes. So it has an area of three. And I want you to continue doing that for frame number three and frame number four and see if you can find some kind of a pattern in that. And I want you to put me on pause and finish doing that. Did you put me on pause? If you didn't put me on pause, put me on pause. If you did put me on pause and you're back to see if you got the right answer, I'm going to carry on. Okay, so um, here's the easiest thing to do. I'm just going to, oh, that was locked. Okay, so we're just going to have to carry on. Um, for frame number three, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do we see any kind of a pattern yet? What are we going up by here? Uh, we're adding, we added four, we added four. Um, so if that pattern continues, I'm going to add four again and I should get 16. So let's double check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Our pattern holds. So let's add four again and four again. How about for our area? This one is one, two, three, four, five, six square units. And then this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten square units. Are we getting any kind of a pattern here? First I went up by two, then I went up by three, then I went up by four, so I'm thinking the next one's going to be fifteen. And then the next one here is going to go up by 5, so I'm going to get to 20. Oops, sorry, 21. A little goof up there. This one went up by 5 to get to 15. The next one should go up by 6 to get to 21. Okay, so I filled in my tables. Which one's linear? Well, hopefully you remember from last unit that linear means constant. A constant way to change or a constant rate of change as it may be. This one's constant. It's going up by four every single time we go up by four. So um, perimeter shows a constant rate of change 
and is therefore, that's what this means, three little things together mean therefore linear. Okay, so now let's graph them and see if that is in fact the case. Now let's figure out frame number is what we set, it's what we know for sure. So down here should be the frame number, frame number on both of them. Now up the side I need, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten spaces there and I need to get to twenty-four. So two's not going to cut it so I can go up by, I'm going to go up by fours. So this would be four, eight, um, then this one will be sixteen, and then this one's going to be twenty-four. Okay, so I've got lots of room on there for frame number. Uh, and frame number along the bottom, I'm going to go over by one every time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have room for extras. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's room for ten frame numbers on there. Uh, now this one over here, I'm going to do the frame number the same. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Now notice just because I'm I'm writing two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm not going up by twos. I'm still going up by ones. I'm just not writing the one, the three, the five, the seven, just so I make room along there. And now I have to get up to twenty-one up the side. I'm going to use the same scale as I had before because whether I go up to twenty-four or twenty-one um, doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to go up by fours, but I'm only going to label every other one. So it really kind of looks like I'm counting by eights. Twenty-four, and this is thirty-two. And we have to label that side. This side was perimeter, and this side was area. Okay, now let's graph them. Uh, this first one I needed uh, one and four. So if I go to one here, I need to go to four, and then I need to go to eight and six, or twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, and I could keep going. If I made more frames, I know it would keep going along this path. I can keep going. Okay, and I can keep going forever if I wanted to. Now this one over here is a little bit different. One and one. So one would be right here and two was three, so that would be right here since this line is four, so three would be right about there. And three and six, so three and six would be right about, whoops, not there, oops, right about there, and four and ten. 4 and 10, that's 12, so 10 is going to be right about there. And uh, 5 and 15, so there's 16, so 15 is right underneath it. And lastly, 6 and 21. 6 and 21, so this is 20, so 21 will be right about there. So now you see this is a definite nice straight line and this is a this is a curve and it's a fairly smooth curve. And so we're actually going to join them since there's no frame number in between it. It's not appropriate to actually draw a whole line up there. I need to draw a dotted line connecting them all in, extending it up. And the same with this one. I need a dotted line. And the reason we do that, and I'm going to try to try to make it keep going on that nice smooth curve. The reason we use a dotted line is because there is no frame number two and a half. And since there's no frame number two and a half, there's actually no useful information uh, between the two and the three. And likewise between the five and the six. There's no useful information in there because you can't have half a frame. Uh, sometimes you can have half of things, like you can have half a minute um, and things like that, but you can't have, say, half pop can or half a number of whatever. Okay. So that's why we draw 
it, it, but we do want to put on that curve um, with our with our dots just to show that there is actually a relationship and maybe we can figure out hey if I look at this on the eighth frame um, well maybe eighth isn't a good example but on the seventh frame maybe there will be if I follow this along um, this is going to be 28 so maybe there'll be 30 30 uh, square units in frame 7 and that's called extrapolating we talked about that before going beyond what you're given to get some information okay now this is just what I was just saying on the two graphs you should join the points with a dotted line or curve this shows that the points have a relationship but that there's no usable data between them there weren't any half frames in the pattern Okay, now what we did when we were figuring out the table, we did what's called finding the first differences. The first difference in a relationship is the difference between the y values. To find it, you take one y value and subtract the y value that came before it. So here's our tables. And there's the values that we had put in them on the other page. Now, when we were finding these pattern in the values, I said, what does it go up by? And you could look at it and say, well, it goes up by four. Every time I, if I skip count by four, it's going up by four. Or you could say, uh, if you're given a table of values, you could take eight and subtract four. So take this one and subtract the one that came before it, and you get four. Twelve subtract eight gives you four. Sixteen subtract twelve. Remember, you take 1 and subtract the one that came before it. 16 subtract 12 equals 4. 20 subtract 16 equals 4. And 24 subtract 20 equals 4. Now, if you get the case where all of these differences are exactly the same number, then we know we have a linear relationship. We know there's a constant rate of change. Or in the case over here, if we subtract them, 3 subtract 1 equals 2, 6 subtract 3 equals 3, 10 subtract 6 equals 4, we know now that it's definitely not linear. There is a pattern to it, but it's not linear. 15 subtract 10 equals 5, and 21 subtract 15 equals 6. So when we look at this thing, we know that it is nonlinear because the first differences, and now I'm not just saying what it goes up by, I'm using the math term first differences are not the same. So we're going to complete the following sentence. The first differences for a linear relation are constant. Oop, maybe not. Let's pick something that's a better color. Are constant. The first differences for a non-linear relation are not constant. And by constant we mean all the same number. All the same number. And that's it. That's the easiest way to recognize. If we recognize a linear relationship, um, the first difference is in the table, there's a constant rate of change. Uh, you got to make sure that these things go up at a constant rate too though, because otherwise the first differences tell you nothing. Okay, And that concludes this video.